Welcome to worship at our midweek worship service during this season of Lent. We're at Mount Calvary and we're in the lounge here at the church. And so we share with you this, this brief worship service. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing your praise to your name, O Most High. So herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. We welcome you to worship. We're glad that we can gather together on our journey in Lent. As a, a hymn or a song for this evening, we are continuing with that theme verse, a theme song, hymn number 715, Christ Be Our Light. Tonight the verse is verse 3. Part of that verse says this, Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. And so we have that idea, that we are to care for one another in community. That's our focus for this evening. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace and rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. <clears throat> the prayer of the day is this. Join me in this prayer. Neighbor to all people, you call us into human communities to serve and be served by one another. Open our hearts to the needs of all our neighbors and teach us to recognize the gifts you have given each of us to use in service to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Psalm 101, verses 5 through 7. Those who secretly slander their neighbors I will destroy. Those who have a haughty look and a proud heart I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me, and those who walk in integrity shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house, and those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the par paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and walk. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. And so let's have the children gather around, if you would, and we share together in this gospel lesson. Now, I'm guessing that you're pretty good at imagination. I want you to imagine as if you are there with Jesus, and you are one of those who have, because you're a child, are able to move through the and around the adults, and you get up close, and you can see where Jesus is standing. And then you begin to hear a noise. Now, we need to know that houses in that time often had a flat roof. And that noise seemed to be coming from above. And then pretty soon, some, some parts of the ceiling began to fall. And you had to step back a little bit. Everybody did. And they kept more and more that kept pulling up, but some small pieces would fall down. And you were watching that, and you were trying to get Jesus' attention to see if he could see it. And all of a sudden, there was a light that was shining through. It was a big hole. And you could see that there were some people up there who were moving things around. And all of a sudden, it got dark again. It looked like they had covered it with some kind of a cloth. And then all of a sudden that cloth came down and it wasn't just a cloth, it was some kind of mat and they were ropes, but there was weight in it. And then it got down far enough where you could see into the mat. There was a person laying there, but he wasn't moving. And by this time Jesus did have that attention. And so now you were going to watch what was Jesus going to do. You see, this man was paralyzed. He couldn't move. And Jesus began speaking to him. And miracle of miracles. He could move. Jesus had healed him. And he got up. He rolled this up and walked through the crowd. And out of the room. Those were, those were some pretty good friends who brought that man to Jesus. I wonder how we can be really good friends and help others, bringing them to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, we come before you, and we ask that you would help us. Help us to think about our lives. Help us to think about what's going on. Lord, help us to see those in need. In your name we pray. Amen. Yes, miracles took place that day in that house. In fact, three and maybe even four miracles. Let's take a look. The lesson has this story about Jesus. 
And the first two miracles happen in verse 5. It's in verse 5 that the man is down there in front of Jesus, and the first miracle is one word. Son. Son. This man is restored to the relationship with God. He was claimed as a part of that being a child of God. That's a declaration that Jesus says. The second miracle follows immediately. Your sins are forgiven. Now notice how that's said. It's declaring something. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus doesn't say, I forgive you your sins. That's different. What Jesus is saying is a declaration. He's the one who is bringing the message from God the Father. Your sins are forgiven. Now, both of those were radical. Because illness or any condition like paralysis would be considered in that day as punishment from God because they had sinned in some way. That's why the declaration, your for sins are forgiven, is so important. Because once a person is declared unclean, like this man was, then he was to be shunned. He was outside of community. He was not to be in that community. But those words of Jesus restored this man and restored him to that community. We know what the scribes, the Jewish religious leaders did. They began to say, blasphemy! No one can forgive sins except God. And how does this one think he can talk from God? Jesus, why are you questioning this? Which is easier? Let me ask you, which is easier? Your sins are forgiven, or stand up and walk, or you're a son, a child of God. Then Jesus does that third miracle, and he says to this man, get up, get up. And he does. He gets up, rolls up this mat, and he walks. The man did. Now let's consider maybe another miracle. Which is harder to do? To see a man who can't move, who's outcast, laying on their bed day after day, begging, whatever he might be doing, which wasn't much. Or to see some way to help him. Let's complicate the question. Because of course we would say we would want to help him. Well, what if this man was a friend? Of course. Yes, we would help him. What, would it make a difference then if we didn't know the man? If he was a stranger? Or would it make a difference if this person was a woman? Or a child? Or would it make a difference if this person was of a different race and spoke a different language? Tearing apart a roof was breaking down a barrier for someone who needed help. They may not have known exactly what Jesus would do, but those friends knew that they needed to act. What are some barriers that we see that need to be broken down to bring that person into the presence of Jesus? And deeper yet, are we contributing to breaking down the barriers? Are we making them harder to break down? Let's change the question again and put it in another perspective. What would you want someone else to do for you 
if you were the paralyzed person? Maybe the question isn't only, who is my neighbor? Which it certainly can be from this lesson. But maybe, who am I? Who am I in my response? We can make a difference in the lives of people by breaking down the barriers. Just like other people have broken down barriers for us. We all need to be in the presence of Jesus. We all need to be declared to be children, sons and daughters of God. To hear those words, you are forgiven and healed and made whole in many different ways. Receive a blessing. The creator who fashions us together with all things. The Christ who leads us into a new beloved community. The spirit who holds us in the communion of saints. One God. Bless you now and always. Amen. Another song to accompany this evening is... Amazing grace, my chains are gone. Um, those barriers fall away when we put our trust in Christ. And God's grace is what um, lets us know that we are loved children of God and also helps us get up and walk and help our neighbors. Let's continue by sharing in prayers. Oh Lord, Support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and drive for them all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing be upon us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, the hours both of day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger, and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in praying a more contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. 
My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you for gathering together with us in this worship this evening. And may God rest, give you rest and peace tonight.